Hey, beautiful people of the living God, all praises to the Most High. So, we're going to go about the council, and all counsel should come from God. Um, counsel of how you're feeling, counsel with your children, counsel with your family, counsel with your siblings, counsel with your parents, counsel as like what you grew up with as a child, the counsel of anything that you're going through with your wife, with counsel with your friendships, counsel with your job. You should get your counsel from God. So Proverbs 8 and 14, counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. So with God, you get counsel. With God, you get sound wisdom. With God, you get understanding. And with God, he has strength to give you strength because he strengthens the weak. So all this is with God. He's your counselor. He is your sound wisdom, your understanding, and your strength. Now, what does God tell you in Psalm 73 and 24? Thou shalt guide... What does it tell you in Psalms 73 and 24? Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel and after receive me to glory. So the counsel that we're supposed to be guided by is the counsel of God because counsel is God's. Counsel is mine as Proverbs 8 and 14 tells you. That is why it's precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little bit, there a little. Then... Like, there's not good counsel, because we know Athaphel's counsel to Absalom wasn't good counsel. Because what happened with his dad, right? So King David said, turn the counsel to Athaphel to foolishness. Like, and Absalom and all the men of Israel said, the counsel of Hushai, the archite, is better than the counsel of Athaphel. So there be people who give you good counsel and evil counsel. For the Lord had appointed to defeat the good counsel of Aphophel to the intent that the Lord might bring evil upon Absalom. All right? So there's good counsel and there's evil counsel. But in all in all, God, they went back to God to find out what counsel should have been done. Even in that situation with Absalom. Now, and Job, it tells you here, who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Because evil counsel come from words without knowledge because they're not done in wisdom, right? God wouldn't tell you to do evil. He'd tell you to do good because doing good is being wise, right? Um, then, okay, um, every, Proverbs 20 and 18. Every purpose is established by counsel and with good advice make war. And God tells you in Proverbs 1 and 25, But you have set a knot at all my counsel. You don't get counsel from him. And would none of my reproof. So that's what God says about the people in the earth. That they set at knot at all his counsel. They say no to all his counsel. And they don't listen to any of his reproof. Now, in Acts it tells you in 20 and 27, For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. So where is this? Remember I said God can send you counsel through one of his messengers. This man is telling you he's declaring unto you the counsel of God. Because counsel is God. And your counsel or whoever's counseling you, their counsel should be coming from God. Alright? Now what does God tell you about the Israelites? Deuteronomy 32 and 28. For they are a nation void of counsel. Neither is there any understanding in them. Void of counsel because the Israelites are supposed to get their counsel from God. But they want to get it from men and people. Alright? So, but the counsel they're supposed to get from God with fasting and praying because they're a holy and a powerful people. And God's inheritance. Now, um, Psalms 20 and 4. Grant thee according to thy own heart and fulfill all thy counsel. He's telling God, grant thee according to thy own heart, God's own heart, and fulfill all thy counsel. Fulfill all God's counsel, not yours. Not yours. Now, what does God tell you in Proverbs 19 and 20? Hear counsel and receive instruction, that thou may be wise in thy later end. But God tells you up here, that, but they have said a not at all my counsel and when none of my reproof for now Proverbs 24 and 6 
for by wise counsel shall thy shall make thy war. Where is your wise counsel to know if you're supposed to go to battle to war or not? Even the war comes from God. That's why it says he's a man of war. And in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Do you know that? It says God is a man of war. For by wise counsel thou shalt make thy war. So even the war, God starts. But that counsel on how you're going to go about that battle, you got to get it from God. If you're going to go to war or not. Wise counsel makes war. All right. Um, Acts 9 and 23. And after that, many days were fulfilled. The Jews took counsel to kill him. So there's good counsel and evil counsel. Was this good counsel when the Jews took counsel to kill Christ? No. Well, they took counsel to kill him. All right. Now, John 11 and 53. Then from that day forth, they took counsel together to put him to death. Now, there be counsels to put people to death, counsels to kill. All right. So there's good counsel. There's evil counsel. There's wise counsel. All right, Proverbs 12 and 15. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he that hearkens on to counsel is wise. Yeah, because counsel is God's and sound wisdom is God's. So if you're getting your counsel from God, you are going to be wise. Now, there's evil counsel, as I told you. Now, Isaiah 7 and 5. Because Syria, Ephraim, and the sons of Ramaliah, have taken evil counsel against thee. So, you know, there's people who do evil counsel against you. Now, I, who is great in counsel? God. And Isaiah 28 and 29 tells you that. This also comes forth from the Lord of hosts, which is wonderful in counsel and excellent in working. So where should your counsel come from? God, because what is he? God is wonderful in counsel and excellent in working. Now, when people take like counsel to destroy your words, like make it seem like you said something that you never said or take your words out of context, in the Bible it's called entangle his talk. Like when someone tries to take your words out of context and do it for evil, when they understand right well what you're trying to say or they're trying to wait for you to say something to entrap you by your words. Now, that's talked about in Matthew 22 and 15. Then went the Pharisees and took counsel how they might entangle him in his talk. So there'd be people who take counsel to entangle you in your talk, to get you to say something, to, to, to you know, hold you, to implicate you. Now, 2 Samuel 17 and 7. And Hushan said unto Absalom, The counsel that Athaphel has given is not good at this time. So there be counsel that's not good. Now Job tells you about God in, in Job 12 and 13. With him is wisdom and strength. He has counsel and understanding. Just like what it tells you in Proverbs 10 and 14. Counsel is mine, sound wisdom, I am understanding. So Job is telling you that, and he says, and he has strength. Job is telling you with him is wisdom and strength and counsel and understanding. Now, Proverbs 21 and 30, there is no wisdom, nor, nor understanding, nor counsel against the Lord. No, there's no wisdom you can get from anybody, no understanding you can get from anybody, and no counsel you can get from anybody that is, that is better than God's, and that could go against God's wisdom, go against God's understanding, and go against God's counsel. So if you think you know something, if it doesn't, if it's not from God's counsel and God's wisdom and God's understanding, then you have more. You, you need to go to God for that because he is understanding. Now, Proverbs 1 and 3, they were none of my counsel. God tells you, 1 and 30, forgive me. God tells you again, they were none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof before he says they were not at my counsel. That in here, he says, they would none of my counsel. They despise all my reproof. Job 29 and 21, unto me men give air and waited and kept silent at my counsel. So Job told them people didn't listen to him when he gave them good counsel. Now I'm just going to 
Where no counsel is, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Now, Proverbs 15 and 22, without counsel, purposes are disappointed. But in the multitude of counselors, they are established. But it could be good or evil. As Ecclesiastes 8 and 2, I counsel thee to keep the king's commandment, talking about God, God is the king of glory, and in regard of the oath of God. Now, there's hearty counsel from good friends, good people. Proverbs 27 and 9, ointment and perfume rejoice the heart, so does sweetness of a man's friend by hearty counsel. That's good, loving counsel, hearty counsel from the heart. A good friend who would give you hearty counsel, not evil counsel or jealous counsel or wicked counsel. Now, Proverbs 20 and 5. Counsel in the heart of man is like deep water. So you, you're, the counsel in the heart of man is like deep water. But a man of understanding will draw it out. Now, it's Matthew 27 and 7. And they took counsel and brought with him the potter's field to bury, bury strangers in it. Well, sorry, that's not the one I wanted for you. Forgive me. Wicked counsel in Ezekiel 11 and 2. I was supposed to read this. Then said he unto me, Son of man, these are the men that devise mischief and give wicked counsel in this city. So there is wicked counsel. Proverbs 19 and 21. There are many devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord, that shall stand. Because what does it tell you? Proverb in Proverbs 20 and 5. Counsel in the heart of a man is like deep water. So that's why it says there are many devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord shall that shall stand. Because look, in Proverbs 20 and 5, counsel in the heart of a man is like deep water, but a man of understanding will draw it out. So even a good man of understanding can draw all the devices of evil in a man's heart that would make them think evil. Or turn them away from the things that are right. All right. Now there is counsel to slay. Now Acts 5 and 33. When they heard that, they were cut to the heart and took counsel to slay them. So there's people who take counsel to slay. Now, what does it tell you in Psalm 60 and 7? I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My reigns also instruct me in the night seasons. So even in the night season, God will counsel you. Now, Job tells you the counsel of the wicked is far from him. Job 22 and 18. Yet he filled their houses with good things, but the counsel of the wicked is far from me. Because Job was getting his counsel from God. So he said the counsel of the wicked is far from me. But it tells you the Pharisees, they even rejected the counsel of God. Now in Luke 7 and 30, but the Pharisees and the lawyers rejected the counsel of God against themselves, being not baptized of him. Psalm 71 and 10, for my enemies speak against me and they lay wait for my soul. Take counsel together. So there's people who take counsel together to lay wait for your soul. But listen, in Judges 18 and 5, and they said unto him, Ask counsel, we pray thee, of God. What did they ask the prophet to do? Ask counsel, we pray thee, of from who? Of God, that we may know whether our way, which we go, shall be prosperous. So that is why you need to get the counsel from God. Why? If Whether our way, which we go, shall be prosperous. To know if the way you go shall be prosperous. That is why you need the counsel from God. Now Hebrews 6 and 17. Wherein God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immobility of his counsel confirmed it by an oath. All right. This is important. Wherein God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel confirmed it by an oath. Now, poor people trust in God 
and they get their counsel from him. Well, mo some of them, some of them. That's why this proverb is talking about those. Psalms 14 and 6. Ye have shamed the counsel of the poor because the Lord is his refuge. Now, you got to know God's counsel stands forever and his thoughts unto all generations. Psalms 33 and 11. The counsel of the Lord stands forever. The thoughts of his heart to all generations. Job 5 and 13. He takes the wise in their own craftiness because when you think you're wiser than God, He'll take you in your own craftiness because what? He, counsel is mine. Sound wisdom. He is understanding. And when you feel like you've outwised God, like the wicked think they do sometimes and they can't, he takes the wise in their own craftiness. And the counsel of the forward is carried headlong. He overthrows it. Now, Psalms 107 and 11, because they rebelled against the words of God and condemned the counsel of the Most High. So there is people who condemn the counsel of the Most High. Yes, there is people who condemn the counsel of God. Psalms 106 and 43. Many times did he deliver them, but they provoked him with their counsel. Pe remember, there's things that people, that, that people do that provoke God to anger. Even wicked counselors. They pro people who go against his word and his counsel you provoke him to anger because it tells you this right now in psalms 106 and 43 many times did he deliver them he many times he delivered people but they provoked him with their counsel and were brought low for their iniquity so they provoke him with your counsel now crafty counsel and psalms 83 and 6 they have taken crafty counsel against thy people and have consulted against thy hidden ones Psalms 18 and 7. Now, the steps of his strength shall be straightened, and his own counsel shall cast him down. What kind of counsel will cast you down? Evil counsel. He takes the wicked in their own craft, crafty counsel. Forward counsel. Your heart. He takes the wise in their own craftiness, and the counsel of the forward is carried away headlong. Now, Psalms 31 and 13. For I have heard the slander of many. Fair was on every side while they took counsel together against me. They devised to take away my life. Counsel of those who are against you. They take counsel together and they devise to take away your life. Now there's counsel of your own will, which you shouldn't do. As it tells you in Ephesians 1 and 11. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the will of him who works all things after the counsel of his own will. God's own will, not our own will. We have no counsel. God is our counselor. Our counsel is supposed to come from him. Psalms 106 and 13. They soon forgot his work. Forgot his work. They waited not for his counsel. So there be people who don't wait on God's counsel. Job tells you again in Psalm, in, in Job 21 and 16, Lo, their good is not in their hand. The counsel of the wicked is far from me. He says it twice. Now, Acts 27, 42, The soldiers' counsel was to kill the prisoners, lest any of them should swim out and escape. So there's counsel to kill. Let's see escape. Now God tells you the children of Israel and the children of Ephraim, they're going to be ashamed of their own counsel instead of taking counsel from him. In Hosea 10 and 6. It shall be also carried unto Assyria for a present to King Shereb. Ephraim shall receive shame and Israel shall be ashamed of his own counsel. Now, they took counsel against Christ, which everyone knows. Matthew 27 and 1. When the morning was come, all their chief priests, so the chief priests and the elders of the people, took counsel against Christ to put him to death. Now, the people, when you're in good counsel, you're supposed to take counsel together to pray. Take counsel together and it shall come to not speak the word and it shall not stand. For God is with us. That is the name of Emmanuel. Take counsel together and it shall come to not the powerful, the power in his name. 
speak the word and it shall not stand for God is with us. Emmanuel means God is with us. Speak the word. It shall not stand because anything you ask in his name. But did you understand the Bible? Now, God tells you the children of Esau in the last days, he was going to take away their, like, their counsel is perished. Now, Jeremiah 49 and 7. Concerning Edom, thus says the Lord of hosts, is wisdom no more in Teman? Is counsel perished from the prudent? Is their wisdom vanished? He's saying, the children of Esau, their counsel is, is perished, and their wisdom is vanished. And there's no more wisdom in Teman out of the children of Esau. Now, Psalms 33 and 10, the Lord brings the counsel of the heathen to naught. He makes the devices of the people of none effect. Now, God tells, Job tells you about the wicked people who hide counsel without knowledge. Who is he that hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understood not things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. Now, Isaiah 16 and 3, take counsel, execute judgment, make thy shadow as the night in the midst of the noonday, hide the outcast, beray not him that wanders. Now, in Samuel 14 and 32, and Saul asked counsel of God, even King Saul knew he should, he, she should ask counsel of God. Now, Joshua 9 and 14. And the men took their victuals and asked not counsel of the mouth of the Lord. What was this that they went to do? I'll get to that. Acts 2 and 23. Him being delivered by the determined counsel of the foreknowledge of God. Counsel and foreknowledge of God you have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. So the, 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 the Israelites had foreknowledge of Christ and they had counsel from God of Christ and they still with wicked hands crucified him and slain him. Now there, now this is talking about when the prophet came to give good counsel about Solomon. Now therefore come, let me, I pray thee, give thee counsel that thou may save thy own life and the son of thy and the life of thy son Solomon. Now Daniel four and twenty seven. Wherefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee, and break off thy sins by righteousness and thy iniquities by showing mercy to the poor if it may be a lightening of thy tranquility that is good counsel what daniel asks for him to break off sins off the king and for him to be righteous and for him to show mercy to the poor lengthening of his tranquility that was good counsel and daniel was getting his counsel from god Now, David's telling you in, in Psalms 13 and 2, How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? He was pouring out his complaint before God. He wanted his He didn't want his own counsel on what to do. He was asking God for his. Now, take counsel with money against your life. In Matthew 28 and 12, what they did to Christ. And they and when they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel, they gave large money unto the soldiers. Okay. Micah 4 and 12. But they know not the thoughts of the Lord, neither understand they his counsel. For he shall gather them as the sheaves into the floor. Isaiah 36 and 5. I say, says thou, but they are but vain words. I have counsel and strength for war. 
Now on whom dost thou trust that thou rebels against me? God asked you a question. He said, I say, say thou, but they are but vain words. I have counsel. God's telling you his creation. I have counsel and strength for war. He just told you he has counsel and strength for war. Now on whom dost thou trust? He says, who do you trust? Because he told you trust no man. And thou rebels against me. He asked you a question. Now there's secret counsel of the wicked, Psalm 64 and 2. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked, from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity. Now Psalms 1 and 1, blesses the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. So there's the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. And I will stop there. So there is good counsel. And there is evil counsel.